Hey, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So let's look at a few common errors that you may have while doing your uh, HTTP request, okay? The Ajax request. So if I go back to homepage here, we did put a system to show us if a different status occurred, right? So what I want to do is the status 200 is only present if the file was found. So if I change anything about this file here or make a mistake, this file will not be found. So then we won't get a status 200, we'll get a different item right here, okay? Now, instead of just doing a console.log of this, I want to do a console.log of the Ajax item as well. That way we can probe what's going on inside it. So click here and put Ajax like so. So normally if the file is found, we'll go here and handle the result. But if the file is not found, we won't get a 200, of course, we'll get anything but a 200. Then it will show us what error that is, and then the code of the error, and then we can get to see the... Obviously, you don't want to put this in your production uh, thing. You can put the error code, that's fine, but not the console.log of the item itself. Uh, that's not good. It will give away too much information, I guess. Okay, so here I will click, boom. And as you can see here, it says controller not found. Okay, so we did get a status 200 after all. Now, the reason we did get a 200 okay is because uh, regardless what we type in the URL here, we will get something. Um, because we are still accessing the index.php page because that is an actual page that exists so it can be a page not found so things did uh, go to 200 after all it's only that the controller was not found now the reason it says that is that because if i copy this uh, copy that and i put it right here in the url you will see that um, it gives me the same result oops that wasn't the same result I was looking for, but that should be, if I click enter, you see controller not found. So whatever is left, the HTML that's left, once you run a specific URL, that's the response you're going to return, okay? That's why we get controller not found here as well. It's just like a normal request, only that the returning HTML is returned back just like normal. Okay, so in order for us to get a page not found, we have to do more drastic measures. And uh, wait, what am I doing? Let me remove this here. Let me just put a wrong page that doesn't exist, like index4.php. And let me refresh that. And now let me click. And here is what we see. So there it is, and the status is 404, which is not found. Okay, and an error occurred 404. Okay, this is what we told it to echo an error occurred 404. But then, which which is this line right here, an error occurred and the error status code. But then it's showing us the item here. So we can see it's got status, status text. You see here, there's status text and it says not found. Okay, great. So text is more uh, um, useful than just the code itself. So let's get status text as well. So I'm going to say uh, here I'll put error uh, code like this. And then I will add something to this and space. Uh, after the code, I'll say error uh, message. And then I can put a plus and say Ajax dot, wait, I've forgotten what it is. It's a status text right there. So it seems to contain uh, something useful. So wait, uh, let me paste that. Uh-huh, there we go. So that is bound to give us more information. So it says is not found. And then there was a response here. Uh, if you want to use something or you want to use it 
but usually this won't be useful information so we can't tell what we are getting so it's better to just ignore it but that's how you check to see what you can use from a specific object if you want you can click on that to see even more information about what's going on okay so grab whatever you can use in here and make use of it if you want the response url etc etc that's entirely up to you okay but at least we know this part is working mm -hmm. now another uh, way to cause an error is using an error 500 which is server error so in this case the status is okay if i remove this we will get to this file but what if there is an error on the file itself like for example this is php and then i just want to type some content like this um, so let's refresh and let's click on that okay so everything worked uh, error code 200 but then we have a response text that has a php error so it says parse error syntax error unexpected blah 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 and all that mm -hmm. so there was an error there yes but then we get the error as a message here so this because we will be returning only json data this is going to mess up uh, the json data that we get back so we need a way to find a way to make sure that we test if this is json or not so we can do that by doing a json.parse and then if it doesn't work uh, we say this is not valid json so for example here uh, let me come down here i can create an object and say var obj is equal to json.parse and then finally i can get the object here content to see if it's a valid object or not so let's try that i'm going to refresh and then let's click and you see there's an error here and code syntax error uh json.pass expects character blah 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 what this means is that it just didn't find valid json that's one error there but let's see if the whole thing continues after that so let's put an alert here to see if even after this error we will get this alert then it means it continues working even when there's an error so let's try this again okay so it didn't continue i guess uh, there was an error there so let's see what we can do with this let's put an if statement and see if we can um, uh, let's see here so i want this object to be an empty object like i had shown you earlier so i want this as an empty object then i want to put this inside an if statement so I'll say if obj uh, is equal to json.parse and i want to parse the result here so that result i want to parse in here so we'll put an if statement let me put that there actually let's use the type to check for this my bad sorry let's do this uh, blah, blah, blah. i'll return this as it was just put result here uh, paste there let me see if we can put an if statement down here so i'm just going to say if um oh wait a minute wait a minute ah right I want to put an if statement if obj now uh, there's no easy way to check what if an item uh, worked or not or if it's of a type that we want so what i do is i say we use the thing called type of in here if type of so not the capital o there because it's kernel case type of obj um let's see is not equal to wait is it capital or 
I don't know why this ha this one has a small letter like this. It's one word. Type of uh, object is not undefined. Like this. So let me explain this. When an item, if 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 for example I try to run this and it didn't work, this one will be an undefined value. For example, if I just say var obj like this, I just declare it like this. This is not a no like it is in PHP, but it's undefined in JavaScript. So if this operation didn't work, then the obj will remain undefined because the value will not be set that I want to be set here. So I'm just checking to see if the type of object is not undefined because undefined is a string that um, okay type of an item so type of returns a string to tell you what type this item is if it's a string it will return a string if it's undefined it will return a string named undefined so that's what i'm checking for here so if it's not undefined it means things went well so here let me try and say um let me move this alert here so if we see the alert then things went well like so so let's try this and if we don't then nothing will happen here so let's try again and see let me refresh so here if i click nothing has happened if i click again it still works but then it shows this error okay so that's fine, it means it continues working. But then if I go back here and remove this, let's see if this will work now. Refresh and click. It still doesn't show because this is empty here, so it doesn't do anything. But then if I echo some JSON data, like for example, name. Uh, let me close my PHP tags here. I just want to put name. Uh, Actually, JSON data requires such brackets and then like this and it needs strings like that name my name. This is valid JSON. So that should be enough. So refresh and uh, click and finally we get the alert. It means we did get some JSON data, which is nice. Now, if I go back and instead of this, I do a console.log uh, .log of the object itself, you will see that it has been converted to an object. This data has been converted to an object with name and then the value of the name. So let's see this in action and let's click there. So you see it's an object name, my name. If I click there, I can see that it even comes with all the goodies that every object should have in JavaScript. And this is, um, wait, value of, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, yeah, everything looks okay. So it's a valid object at this point, which is good. This is what we want. We just want to return database data as objects to and from the database. Then once we reach here, we can start displaying that data. So hopefully I haven't bored you with uh, the ins and outs of JSON and how it works, because I think this is very important for you to understand that way, when you have errors, you know exactly where to go to fix them. So at this point, we are good. We know that in this section here, once we reach here, we have valid JSON. There's no A on JSON. It's not a person's name. By the way, JSON stands for JavaScript, uh, wait, yes, JavaScript Object Notation. So what it means is that if you notice um, uh, when I create an object like this, the last time I created an object, I did this and it was something like name and then full colon and then I put uh, the value of the name like this. This looks pretty similar to what I had done here which is right there. And this is JSON, while this is a JavaScript object. So they look exactly the same. And that's, that's because that's what was used. So they used JavaScript objects in order to design a language called JSON, which is a way, uh, JSON is simply a way to convert an object into a string. That's it. An object or an array into a string. So as you can see, this is a string. It's not really an object, it's just some text but then 
when we come back here, we saw that it was converted to an object. And then if I stringify it, I can change it back to a string, transfer it to another computer. And then once it reaches that computer, um, it changes back to an object, which is more useful than a string. So if you want to learn more about JSON, I do have a series right on this channel. You can check it out and learn more on JSON. But at this point, we have valid JSON, so we are good to go. So I will remove this here like that. Now we are ready to bring back some useful data from the PHP side.